Hi guys, it's Jamie here and today we're going to make a simple Midori style journal. That's a journal with removable pages. I'm going to use some Amazon packaging to make the cover and the spine. With the Amazon packaging, I have cut two pieces of six and a quarter inches by nine inches or 16 centimeters by 23 centimeters and those are your front and back. And the reason I have done that is this is a standard piece of British A4, very similar to US letter size A4. As you can see, if that goes into there, it will fit. With the spine, I have one piece, and because it's quite thin, I've done it two pieces. This is slightly thicker packaging, this is thinner. I've got this piece at nine centimeters across, by or three and a half inches and then it is the same length 23 centimeters nine inches so that would be your spine the second piece I've already marked up for punch holes so these are going to be punched out I started at the halfway width of this and as you can see it's only slightly slimmer than the piece that I'm going to glue it onto. So I started at the halfway point and in centimeters I measured two centimeters that way, two centimeters that way. I'm not quite sure what that is in inches. I don't think that's a full inch. It might be like three quarters. That's for people who like measurements and not doing things by eye. The pieces we're going to put together initially are these ones and the way we're going to do it is we're going to leave a small gap between the pieces. This is white masking tape. I'm holding it and putting one piece across and another piece across. And then the same on the other side. And as you can see already, you would be able to turn your journal. I'm just taking big pieces of masking tape and running all the way down. I will be doing that here, this side, this side, turning it over and doing it the same on the other side. That's now together. And now with this second spine that's going to sit inside of this one, I want to punch those holes. Just punch where I've marked the holes. Because this will be seen, I am going to cover it with the same card or paper that I used to cover the whole journal. And I'll be doing that inside and out. I'll grab that paper. To make the cover, I have two pieces, and they happen to be double-sided, but it doesn't need to be, of 12 by 12 that I've cut down so that if I were to put my journal on, it would definitely cover it and go over the edges. We need to join one piece to the other piece. To do that, I'm going to use some score tape and run it along one edge, fairly close to the edge. Burnish it down. I'm gonna pick a bit of the score tape up and pull it back, but not all of it. Because what we want to do is get paper one lined up to the edge of that score tape and the top edge and then when we're happy that it's roughly lined up then pull back the rest of the score tape holding the paper down as you go then you've got the two together the first thing i'm going to do is put some glue and place this. I'm going to score tape along edges and in the middle and also use wet glue. All the panels that currently exist I'm going to add score tape to. Once all your score tape's down remove every single last piece that's on here. Next I have a glue stick and wet glue so I'm going to use a combination of the two. I'm going to cover 
everything with the glue stick and just around the edges I'm going to do some wet glue I'm going to place the spine down first and then bend that up before laying it flat and pushing it down and bend and I want to bend gently we need to use a bit of pressure on a smoothing tool or something but you can really push the paper and the cover now that's fully down and covered we're going to cut these corners off but not right up to that edge across and then maybe round a little bit so you get a sort of angled cut cross and then just twist it slightly when you finish it off very gently we're going to work the cover up and over on every line to gently bring it round once you've got all four sides done, then you're going to use a bone folder, push it down to make a sharp edge. So that this cardboard doesn't show through, you want to use your bone folder or your finger just to squash that in a little bit. So it goes over that edge and then bring it over. So you're giving it a bit of a manual squash down all your corners are covered and your cardboard is not poking through those corners where you have this put your crease in cut up just up to your crease line not sure I can see it in this light that way and that way you need to do that for three more times that you did with the corners where you've cut this push that paper over that gap everything back out now on every single one that you've done so along each edge each outer edge once you've done that tape I'm now going to work on getting one piece at a time down score tape off wherever it is sitting and if it's going over edges i tend to just use hands and pull it back as before because i like to use a lot of glue but i don't want to soak the cardboard i have the glue stick and i should be going over the score tape over the bits that haven't been glued up to the edge and I still have some liquid glue as well I don't want or need too much of that you are going to fold one over the other and push it into place take any air bubbles out while it's still malleable so along the edge and in you're ready to go on to the next bit now that's all done we need to cover this just on one side it is the same idea as covering before now that's covered we're going to use the whole punching guide here to punch repunch the holes that is ready to be put onto here i'm just having a look and wondering whether i want to run some paper across the whole of this i've put a bit of paper on here just to make that back neater and now i need to put this onto here which is going to mean quite a strong glue although the score tape is not the strongest it's a good place to start or i think it is i have some of the uhu silicon glue which runs very fast and is very strong it's an all-purpose we're going to line it up on here push it into place i think that's roughly central 
put some weights on that and let it sit and take. The last stage with this cover is to cover up the final bit of cardboard. I've cut a similar paper because I've run out of that original one to just fit inside it for a bit of matting and layering. So I'm going to stick those down. That is now all put together and is quite a solid cover. I'm going back to these punched holes, which have been punched two times already, but we're punching them for the third time because now we need them to go through the cover as well. Check my eyelets and I need the bigger hole, but that's okay because again, we just go with where we were line the bigger hole punch up and then push it down. I'm going to put one eyelet in now so you can see in there into the machine connecting with the top bit and then bringing it down and then a bit of pressure and that's your eyelet set. For the pages themselves or the binding for the pages we have elastic cord because it's elasticated we don't need as much as twice probably one and a half will do then you come to the inside you want to tie this pretty tight because if you don't your papers wobble about all over the place three of those all together everything is in place to add papers to this when looking at papers, because junk journalers often add pockets and flips and tucks and tags, a journal can double, if not treble, in size. So I tend to work on the basis that I don't want to go more than a half full when first starting to select the papers that are going to go in the journal. Because this is going to be my light Cinderella journal, I've chosen to go very girly colours this time and edge things with the Victorian Velvet Distress Oxide. One thing you do want to do when having done this style of closure is to make sure that your papers will fit properly height wise because it does reduce the height of the papers that can go in here without cutting into the paper. This is actually from the July Creator Club. I've put some in, not the main ones, just the subset, which is sepia Venice. And I just want to check that everything fits without causing any buckling. And it does, which is awesome. The papers I've already put to one side are the Venice papers, a lot obviously from the Cinderella. Something I made on a video, again, pinned topics recently a music score with napkin and when you open that out it's already got a pocket some ones that i dyed again i think there's a video for that some pretty blues and things getting some coffee stained papers out probably one or two junk mail envelopes to decorate up and whatever else takes my fancy but we've already got a lot I like this style journal because you can put things in and out I can decorate a page and then put it in rather than have to try decorate a whole journal in advance and then sew it in which is quite awkward when you've got flips and tucks or sew it all in and then try and decorate when things are getting lumpy and bumpy because of flips and tucks and pockets and you've got you haven't got a nice smooth surface to work on so I am a particularly keen fan of the removable style of journal though I have made other styles. The next video will be paper selection and some page decoration, different ideas including book page envelopes because that's been asked for, varieties of those. Details for the Creator Club which has exclusive videos not available on YouTube or in group are in the description. With Creators Club you get a huge amount of exclusive printables that include pockets and tags and beautiful designer papers. You also get bonus papers that we that Emma never advertises and just throws up there that goes with the journal that you're currently working on. And we do live craft events. Do check out the details for the July Club. The theme is Masquerade. It is 
stunning. I have never seen anything like it for sale on Etsy or anywhere ever before. It is gorgeous. I can't wait to work with it. I'll be back with part two shortly.